Hi everybody, welcome back to Recombinant DNA Technology and today we're gonna look at application of Recombinant DNA Technology. Well done because it also means that this is the last video for Recombinant DNA Technology. Yay! Our learning outcome for today is to be able to briefly explain the application of recombinant DNA technology in mass production of insulin using cDNA. So that's a new word there, cDNA. Before this, you have been introduced with rDNA, which is recombinant DNA and non-recombinant DNA. Now we're going to look at what the cDNA is. Why you're going to make insulin? By genetic engineering, what's so good about it is the gene use is from human, it is from our kind. And then insulin produced will be similar to human insulin, of course, because you take it from human. And then it is non allergic, it is also cheaper and can be produced in large amount. So you don't have to take from actual human, but you can take it outside human because you're producing it outside of human. Complementary DNA or cDNA. So here it is. The cDNA actually refer to the word complementary DNA. So the cDNA is a DNA molecule synthesized in vitro, which means synthesized outside a cell using mRNA template catalyzed by an enzyme reverse transcriptase. So we're going to use mRNA as our substrate and the enzyme reverse transcriptase and then we're going to have the product cDNA and then this cDNA will then be introduced into our vector just like before and then it's going to produce more of this gene to produce more of the protein that we wanted a cDNA molecule is identical to a native DNA but it lack of the non-coding region, the intron. You need to know that the human DNA is very vast. It's, it, it is very large. It includes the exon and intron where the exon is the one that express the gene and the intron is the non-coding region. During the makeup of mRNA, this intron will be spliced leaving only the exon so that it can produce the protein. However, the intron is actually beneficial to us as a human because it serves as our distinguished marking like your fingerprint. So my introns are not as the same as your introns although I'm a human and you are a human as well. Also, it has something to do with evolution. In producing protein, the intron is not necessary. So that's why during production of mRNA, we, we gotta cut the intron away. This genetic engineering, why not we take only the exon, leaving out the intron, so that we're gonna have shorter sequence of DNA and can be inserted into more vector, bacteriophage or cosmid or plasmid. And if it is too large, you have to use the yak only and maybe it cannot be taken up by any vector at all. Here is an animation and example of human cell. We take the DNA and a part of it, but then it is very big. So if you take it from mRNA, which only have the coding sequence, you're gonna have a shorter one and you're gonna have the perfect protein as well. So these are the steps in production of cDNA. First, we need to isolate the mRNA. Why? Because again, in your cell, you already splice out the intron, leaving only the exon where these are the one that will coat and produces the protein. For example here, insulin protein because we're taking the DNA which codes for insulin. So we take it out of your cell and then we put it into the test tube. We add the reverse transcriptase, the enzyme, which uses the mRNA as a template. So we're gonna add reverse transcriptase enzyme in vitro, which means outside the cell in the test tube, to make single-stranded DNA. So the single-stranded DNA is also known as single-stranded cDNA. Let's check out this animation. This are an mRNA. And then let's say this is the reverse transcriptase, it will produce the strand of cDNA. And then the next step is to degrade the mRNA. 
Following the enzyme degradation of mRNA, a second DNA strand complementary to the first is synthesized by DNA polymerase. The next step after you have already made cDNA strand, we're gonna degenerate the RNA because we're gonna put DNA sequence into the vector and then into the host to clone. We cannot put something like cDNA and mRNA. We must turn it into a DNA, a perfect DNA, not just a single strand DNA. So first of all, you need to degrade the mRNA. By doing that, you have the single stranded cDNA, which then can act as a template to make another strand of cDNA complementary to your cDNA that already made. How are you going to do that? You're gonna add DNA polymerase. So the DNA polymerase will use the single-stranded cDNA that you have made as template, making another strand of cDNA, leaving you with perfect double-stranded cDNA to be introduced into the vector. In this particular example, we're gonna use plasmid. This double-stranded DNA called this complementary DNA or cDNA is then modified by the addition of restriction enzyme recognition sequences at each end so that it can be cut by the same restriction enzyme we're gonna cut the plasmid and then finally the cDNA is inserted into vector DNA in a manner similar to the insertion of genomic DNA fragment do remember we're gonna still add ligase here so that it can form phosphodiester bond and can function well. Therefore, the cDNA that are cloned make up a library containing a collection of genes. Let's check it one more time. DNA of eukaryotic gene are vast and very long. They have exon and introns. The exon is the coding sequence, while the intron is the non-coding sequence which is not necessary during the expression of protein. Our target is to produce insulin, so we just need the one that codes for the insulin. So now we're gonna extract the mRNA, but what we want is the DNA, so we need to change this mRNA into DNA. So that DNA is called as cDNA. Or complementary DNA. So after extracting the mRNA, put it in the test tube, you add the reverse transcriptase and this enzyme uses mRNA as template to produce single-stranded cDNA strand. After that, we're going to decrease the mRNA so that we can use the single-stranded cDNA strand to produce double-stranded cDNA by adding the DNA polymerase. So now you got a perfect double-stranded cDNA that only have coding sequence for insulin. Next, you're gonna put restriction site here and restriction site here so that it can be cut by the same restriction enzyme as the one you were gonna use to the vector. So after you have cut it, you may now insert it into the vector and then you have your cDNA library. These are the examples of the production of insulin outside of our cell. It would be scary, right? You have to collect lots of human and then extract the insulin from their blood. But we don't have to do that because we have a product of recombinant DNA technology using cDNA. If you're good at this particular recombinant DNA, you probably can make a lot of money by producing a lot of proteins that people are lacking because their cell cannot produce it. Yeah, it's a path to become a billionaire. So that's all for today. And we've done with this chapter. This is Madam Nadia at your service. If you have anything you want to ask, you may come and see me. I will be here and glad to help you. Thank you.